What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got a nice weekend update for Palantir for you guys. We're going to go over how Palantir is using its Foundry platform in the fight against cancer and how they are going to help and try and solve this vicious disease. So we have a couple of different aspects of the industry that Palantir is working in that I definitely want to show you guys. We're going to look at some of the case studies that Palantir has actually put out on their website that I know not a lot of you guys have seen in the past. We're also going to go over some of uh, Palantir's work in the finance industry and kind of tie that into the rapid phase prototyping competition in which Palantir could be receiving a very substantial contract from the FDIC in the near future. Now, this is kind of all going to tie in with uh, my theory and what I have been talking about over the past couple of months in my Palantir videos that Palantir's total addressable market at the current time is unknown and essentially unlimited. They are in a variety of different industries in their 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 product their foundry platform can be used uh in so many different ways to help different organizations businesses medical offices and things like that in order to help the public through data analytics so we have a lot to cover in this video and before we get into all of that if you guys would like to earn two free stocks with weeble valued up to one thousand eight hundred fifty dollars make sure you check out that link down below in my description all you have to do is sign up for an account deposit over a hundred dollars and you get access to those two free stocks and if you guys enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you in these videos, make sure you go down and hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So last week for Palantir was actually a very good week. We went up about 5%, but we are still trading near these lows. As I've said before, before, I think we are going to see some pretty strong resistance at this 25 through $27 level. But if we can get up past that, I think we could go all the way to 30 in the short term. But in my opinion, and, and I'm not focused really on the short term for Palantir, we've seen Alex Karp, uh, the CEO of Palantir and the co-founder come out and say that he's not really focused on the short term as well. He is focusing, uh, focusing on creating long-term shareholder value and creating a very strong company over the long term. Now, Palantir has been around for about 17 years now, so they really know what they're doing. They're trying to create a longer term data analytics company to help solve the world's problems through data. So let's take a look at a couple of these impact studies in the healthcare sector that Palantir has released to us on their website. So when we come over here, we can see that one platform, Global Impact Palantir Foundry. So healthcare institutions use Palantir Foundry to accelerate the rate of scientific discovery with real-time access to experimental findings. They are uh, performing novel statistical analyses, developing breakthrough insights into diseases, and collaborating in new ways across the scientific community. Now, the first impact study is going to be turbocharging research at the NIH. NIH high throughput screening robots have tested hundreds of millions of combinations of cell lines and compounds. Researchers use Foundry to access and analyze this massive scale data, uncovering potential repurposing opportunities, synergistic drug combinations, and genomic correlates of drug response. So when we come over to this actual study, we can see that the challenge here, the NIH wanted to enable precision medicine by better understanding how genetic genetic and other factors impact drug efficacy, but the scale and intricacy of data from high throughput screening robots, genome sequencers, mass spectrometers, and other instruments made it extremely challenging. This is where Palantir comes in. Scientists had to painstakingly harmonize data from many sources, and informaticians had to do substantial pre-processing work on the data. Existing tools were originally developed with in in informaticians in mind, but their complexity prevented research researchers from accessing, analyzing, and publishing their findings in a timely way. So here's how Palantir is providing their solution. The NIH and NIH uses Foundry to integrate and harmonize scientific data from dozens of internal and external sources. Processing, normalizing, uh, analyzing this data in Foundry allows new modes of information in biologist collaboration via direct connection to online and offline exper ex experiments, data accessibility for researchers, traceability, and privacy protection. 
action. So essentially what this is allowing uh, these different institutions to do, specifically the NIH, is to take all of the data that they are receiving and focus less time on actually interpreting the data, but gathering that data that they are they are researching and being able to interpret it. So the NIH researchers have uh, uncovered insights in hours that used to require months of data gathering and manipulation. One lab predicted novel, novel drug combinations for use in an oncology setting, which were then experimentally validated in vitro. In vivo follow-up is currently underway for several of these combinations. If successful, this will lead to a clinical trial. A different lab validated a gene signature for drug response found in, in, in internal experiments. They compared observations from public genomic data with the findings from clinical data, increased their confidence in the initial finding, and defined precise experimental follow-ups. This is very big news. I don't think we have seen a lot of work for Palantir in this type of setting, in the genomic setting. And I think it's a very good sign to see Palantir continuously expanding into new industries. And that really goes along with what I've been saying about how Palantir's total addressable market at the current time is unknown, and technically, in my opinion, it is unlimited. So taking a look at a slightly different study, we can see unifying patient data to personalize medicine. So cancer centers use Foundry to overcome a siloed data landscape with a unified and compliant view of patients that fully respects patient privacy. Scientists uh, create granular patient cohorts to deliver individualized therapy. So let's take a look at some of the details of this. So the challenge that they were facing was siloed systems and data quality issues make it difficult for cancer centers to use data to improve patient outcomes. Patient records such as diagnosis and treatment data often come in unstructured physician notes and stem from multiple systems. These inconsistencies lead to duplicate patient records and data issues prevent researchers from answering critical questions. What treatments are more effective for patients with a specific molecular mutation of low grade uh, of a low grade diffuse tumor? Are there specific drugs that work better than others in these cases? And what Palantir's Foundry is able to do is essentially take all of these different data sources um, and these different notes that the doctors are putting out and use their AI platform on the Foundry to kind of give the researchers and, researchers and clinicians and the doctors the best idea and the, and the best thing to do and give them ideas on how to help these patients so that they are able to answer these questions that we just went over. So the impact research now identify patient cohorts in 30 minutes versus this of previously taking weeks and ongoing work is reducing the time it takes to, to collect data for a study from months to a few days. Now working in the medical industry, if any of you guys work in the medical industry, uh, it's very important to actually get all of this data uh, and actually be able to interpret it sooner rather than later because some of these uh, diseases are very life-threatening uh, in the short term, and they need to figure out what the best uh, 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 treatment option in the short term is going to be for these patients, and Palantir is able to do exactly that. In addition to some of these studies in the medical field, when we come over here, we can see that Palantir is also working in the field of finance. So major financial institutions use Palantir Foundry to centralize and accelerate their operations in compliance with rapidly changing regulatory terrain. With a unified and securely managed view of their clients, banks are unlocking their ability to collaborate across functions from client onboarding to marketing. So this one, Global Bank automatically resolved 4 billion customer records uh, spread across jurisdictions. Accessing customer information necessary for compliance is now 90% faster. The next one, a retail bank could only investigate 30% of new account app, uh, applications flagged for money laundering risk and automatically rejected the others. With Foundry, the same team now investigates 100% of flagged accounts. Then there's another one. Multi-factor alerting models developed in Foundry allow glo a global bank to address evolving threats and reduce false positive alerts. Alert triage is now 45 times more precise and analysts resolve alerts 60% faster. So, We've seen a couple of times Palantir get involved in this financial industry, but the biggest thing that Palantir has coming up potentially is this rapid phase prototyping competition. As an important part of FDI tech, the rapid phase prototyping competition is designed to accelerate the adoption of modern technological tools to help financial institutions, particularly community banks, provide more timely and granular data to the FDIC in a more effective and efficient manner. That sounds exactly like what we just read on Palantir's impact 
reports. In addition, these new tools will help the FDIC gain a greater insight into the financial health of these institutions and allow for more efficient supervision. The FDIC intends to rely on a rapid phase prototyping approach in this and future competition. So all companies as of April 2021 have demonstrated their final prototypes in March 2021, and the FDIC is now determining whether the uh, whether any should be selected for production contract negotiation. Additionally, in March 2021, the FDIC issued a financial institution letter providing information and clarification for FDIC supervised financial institutions. So when we come down a little bit further, this is kind of uh, the, the trajectory of what these different companies went on, the concept paper, the initial prototype, the final prototype, and a potential production contract. So right now we are sitting at phase four, and, and this really concluded the phase three. They hosted the demo days to allow vendors to present their final prototypes in mid-March of 2021. So everything has kind of concluded. At this point, the FDIC is deciding which one of these 11 companies listed down here in which Palantir is included are going to get this pretty substantial contract. Now, we don't know at the current time what the size of this contract is. If you guys have any information on the size of uh, the potential contract, make sure you guys comment that down below. I have not been able to find uh, the actual contract size, but I think that is some very useful information to know. So if you guys have some information on this, make sure you guys comment that down below, preferably with a source. So hopefully Palantir is able to secure this contract, but if not, they are already working in the financial industry. So it is not the end of the world if they do not win this competition. Now, we have a lot of different catalysts coming up for Palantir. There's a potential new double click demo day coming up. Uh, because Palantir has come out and said that these demo days are going to be a series. But what you have to remember is that uh, these demo days are not really for the everyday retail or institutional investor. These are for Palantir's clients. They are showcasing their technology so that they can essentially get more business in. Because if these inst uh, these different companies are seeing how beneficial that Palantir's different platforms are and how they could benefit them uh, in their business, they are going to be able to receive more contracts. So that is going to conclude this update on Palantir. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. Again, it costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps me out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people as possible. And if you want to see more uh, videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I'm trading and which strategies I'm using to trade them. So I hope Hope you guys are having a great weekend and I'll see you guys in the next video.